Hey everyone, welcome to Writing for Media, MCOM 240. This is an orientation video that will give you sort of a background of what the course will include as well as where to start. So this is your homepage. A couple of things to take a look at here. Anytime announcements are provided, uh, be they just an overview of what's happening that week or um, another of other options like uh, there's an extension on something or an adjustment to an assignment, those would be listed there. And so this is a immediately connected to your student, SWIC student email. So if you have that active and you are monitoring it, you should be able to get everything pretty quickly. If you are not monitoring it, I would recommend that you get that set up right away so that you are able to access quick information, not just from this class, but from any other course you have, because your student email is your primary mode of communication for our classes. A couple of other things. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself and then about how the course will work. My name is Kristen Rupert Leach. I am the Chair of Languages, Philosophy, and Communication Arts on the Belleville campus, but for the whole school. But I am uh, presently housed at the Belleville campus. So if you are ever on that campus, you can come and say hi to me. My office is on the second floor of the Liberal Arts Building. You can also give me a call. I am in my office fairly regularly. Uh, my office hours change every semester, so it just depends. Uh, this screen here where it says professor details will have office hours listed on it. So take an opportunity to kind of scan that and see what you can come up with in terms of what might be needed in, if you are requiring to come visit me and such or give me a call. There is a little blurb about me. I have a background in mass communication, also speech communication, and a doctorate in education. And so there's quite a few little nuances that I've explored in all of those areas. I am also a huge dog lover. I have many dogs. <laughs> They're all Boston Terriers. As a matter of fact, my girl and boy, these guys right here, had a litter of babies this past June, uh, June 9th, or excuse me, June 2019. Uh, so this, these little guys were just such a delight to have. I thought I would show that to you. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty much me. Again, there's office hours that'll be different for each semester, but take a look at it when you get a chance. The syllabus for this course will give you a very broad overview of what to expect in the class. So I'm going to open it up real quick here and you can see uh, somewhat of what we have going on. Essentially, this is a course that focuses on all the different ways and areas in which writing is done for the public. That isn't just broadcast, it's also social media writing and advertising, copy editing, all of that is a major part of the course. So essentially the big picture here is what is out there in terms of writing for media. And so we'll kind of explore all those areas. There's a couple other things to take a look at. If you are not already in possession of the textbook, please make sure to grab that ASAP. You will rely on it pretty heavily for a lot of the course. So this is the book you want. You want to make sure to get that and get yourself settled with it pretty quickly. There are a number of different grading procedures, or not grading procedures, excuse me, a number of different assignments. It looks like a lot, but it's actually really short assignments. They don't take a huge amount of time apart from maybe the major ones, these three down here. And I'll show you week one so you can kind of see what it looks like and know what to expect for subsequent weeks. So that's kind of the overview. There is one other thing I wanted to bring up as far as the syllabus goes. I do have an attendance slash withdrawal policy. What that means is I'm not going to give you a grade for attendance or you know monitor every single little time you click on something. What I will do though is if you are absent, and I'm putting air quotes out and you can't see me, but if you are quote absent from the class for seven days in a row, meaning you don't log in for seven days, or you miss two assignments in a row. So two assignments in a single week or two weeks, whatever it might be. If you miss two assignments in a row or do not log in for seven days, then I will withdraw you from the course. 
Otherwise, you're in it for the long haul unless you choose to withdraw yourself. And I do that prior to midterm. After midterm, it is up to you to withdraw yourself if you so choose, or your only other option is to send me a written request to withdraw you from the course if you want me to do it. But most people, if they need to withdraw for some reason, they can do it on their own very smoothly. So that's it. There's basically that information. I'm going to go ahead and close out the syllabus here and we'll go back to the course and take a look at some of the other things that we want to be aware of. Uh, that primarily exists when it comes to uh, the schedule and then the way the course is laid out. So essentially each week is a chapter. So you read the chapter, you do the discussion posts, and the quiz and the writing assignment for that week, which it's not a big writing assignment. It's a very simplistic version of a writing assignment. And that heads throughout the semester all the way through to week eight in which you complete a midterm and then you will continue on. And then finally, you'll have a few weeks at the end of the semester. It's about three weeks, although that does include Thanksgiving to complete a final exam and a final project. And so we'll kind of take a look at what those look like here. So we'll pull up week one to start with. Each week has the dates as well as the topic slash chapter that you're focusing on. So for week one, you have what is required that week, what chapter you need to read, and then this is always going to describe your discussion post requirements right up front. So it'll ask you a question or have you do something. And then all you need to do, think of this as just a chat room in a way. Um, a little bit more involved than that, obviously. But I'm not looking for essay style. I'm not looking for um, formal responses. This is more of a, a, a the same kind of communication we may have in a face-to-face -face class just on a discussion board being that this is a uh, it is a uh, online class. So the grading is done like this. You participate actively. And what do I mean by actively? I mean you give me that in, initial response to this this topic, that initial post pretty early on in the week prior to Friday for sure of that week. And then you kind of talk with your classmates. You, you know, respond to a couple of students, a couple of co-students. Co you provide responses when people reply to your post, that kind of thing. I'm not measuring how much you are posting or exactly the language, although I do ask that you be appropriate. I'm not going to measure every single little detail. This is just a conversation we're having as a class. So that's what you're going to do for every discussion. Just kind of think of it as a good rule of thumb to post your, your original response, your original post prior to Friday, and then chat with us the rest of that time, okay? Then you'll have a quiz during that week, and it will only cover the chapter that you read. It is heavily based on the textbook, so I would recommend you get that textbook out and ready to go. That Any notes you have taken, you have access to. This is not a test that you have to be without notes. It's a, it's a quiz. It's formative, meaning I'm at, I don't mind you looking up the questions. I don't mind you searching for the answers. That's not a big deal to me. This is more about you gaining information in a different way than it is about me testing your knowledge. Okay? You do have a 60-minute time limit, but they are multiple choice and true-false questions only, so don't stress too much about it. Then each week you'll also have a writing exercise. Now sometimes those writing exercises are reflections, which is what this is, where you'll watch a video and then you'll just give me a one to two paragraph reflection about what you thought of the video. And I do give you some feedback here as to how to do that. And others are a little bit more involved. So let me find one. I think week three might have one. Let's see. Yes, so week three is a little different in that it's a, an actual activity that you do as opposed to a reflection of a video. So you'll see in this case there's an assignment attached and it gives you an overview of what you need to do for that assignment. So you might, re for this one, you're going to rewrite 10 sentences in the active voice. 
that, and that'll be the entirety of your assignment. It just depends on, on the week as to what you're doing. But that's what these weeks look like. They are set up the exact same way for every week and should be pretty smooth sailing. And if you have questions or concerns, I should be able to answer them fairly quickly. The mod, uh, excuse me, the midterm is again a full midterm. It is the only thing that you would have to do during that particular week. And in this case, it is also multiple choice and true false. I want to say there's 50, I think there's 50 or 60, I think there's 50 questions on the multiple, or on the midterm, excuse me, at a point apiece. And so that's kind of what this looks like. When you go down to the very end, so you've gone through the book for the most part, there are two chapters I've left out that uh, I think are a little overwhelming. So we'll, we just kind of stuck with the ones that I gave you. During weeks 14 through the finals week, you will have a final exam, which again is a multiple choice and true false. I think this one has 70, no, excuse me, it has 120, 120 questions or something along those lines, 130 maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. I did it a couple of, a couple of weeks ago and I don't remember the exact number, but there are um, individual multiple choice and true false questions for this as well. And there will be some repeats from previous assignments. So keep that in mind. The final project is actually for you to create a website and the website can be created using a really simple web um, resource such as WordPress or Weebly. So you can use um, these websites in order to create a, or not, you, yes, use these websites in order to develop your own web page slash website. And there's a couple of things that you need to do with that. And, and honestly, that can be any topic, as long as it's appropriate, that you are interested in. Uh, if you are a dog breeder or a rescuer and you want to do a, a website on that, great, no problem. If you are really into cars and you want to do a website on that, great, do it. Movies, it doesn't matter. The topic can be any topic you're interested in with, uh, as long as it's appropriate. Otherwise, you can do um, something specific to you, kind of your own personal website that shows who you are. That may be beneficial to you in the future if you're applying for scholarships or, or um, various, various opportunities. So that's kind of what your semester will look like. Pretty straightforward. You have a series of things that you can do in order to keep on task. And I am here always. I will make sure to give you as much information as I can when I can. I will be on that discussion board with you, chatting with you. I will give you feedback as soon as I can on assignments. So I usually grade pretty quickly, but sometimes things happen and I need an extra couple of days to do grading. And that's essentially it. So if you have questions or concerns, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will see you on the discussion board this semester. Thanks.